Let's go. Hello, what's up, peeps? This is the Geek Artist, and on today's tutorial, I'll be sharing five tips to paint faster in Photoshop. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to watch this video till the end. Tip number one Coloring your shadows to add a more aesthetic vibrance to your artworks. Now, I'll demonstrate what I mean here with a very simple example. So, we have a ball here. I haven't painted any shadows on it yet. Now the common thing that most beginner artists will do is pick the base color of the ball, then pick a darker shade of that color and then paint the shadow. Although there's nothing wrong with that, but again, there are better approaches than that. What you can do is instead of choosing a darker shade of the base color, you can choose a darker shade of a slightly different color or hue. For example, the ball we have here is of orange color. Now instead of painting the shadow as a darker shade of orange, I'll pick a cooler color like a darker purple and then paint the shadow. Now the shadow we have is a bluish dark orange. I'll compare the two cases side by side and you can see the difference. The second one looks a lot more vibrant. You can apply the same process to characters as well. Shadows of complementing colors will add a lot more dynamic and aesthetically pleasing look to your output compared to monotonous shadows that can look bland and uninteresting. Moving on to tip number two, edges. A great way to make your artwork look more alive is by achieving a good balance of hard and soft edges. You can color with entirely hard edges only, for example the cell shading styles of animes and mangas, or you can paint entirely with soft airbrush only and the output can look boring at times. But if you can keep a bit of both, then the output can reach a whole new level. It is more close to reality and is a lot more interesting to look at. And you can do this very easily. You can start with hard edges using selection like lasso tool and then filling in colors like in cell shading. Once that's done, you can choose the smudge tool, set its value to around 20% and smudge the areas that can have softer shadows. The transition between hard and soft edges adds a great deal of beauty to your artwork. Similarly, you can also do the opposite of this. You can start with soft edges by painting the shadows with soft round brush and then choosing a hard edged brush of smaller size and erase the areas that can have sharper edges. You can also merge the shadow layer with the base flat layer and then use mixer brush to gently mix those soft edge areas. I recommend using lighting references to better understand how edges work on different surfaces. Tip number 3. Coloring your line art. Black line arts are great, but if you can add a little bit of color to your line art, your artwork can look more vibrant. It's completely a stylistic choice. A great way to do it is create a new layer on top of your line art layer, set it to clipping mask mode, and then fill that layer with the color. You can also manually paint different colors for different areas. Finally, you can adjust the opacity of the clipped layer to get the right amount of colors. Another easier way is duplicating all the main color layers, merging them, dragging the merge layer on top of the line art layer and clipping it to the line art layer. Next, go to filter, blur, gaussian blur, keep increasing the value and check the preview until the colors blur out enough to be visible on the line art in a smooth way and then you can lower the opacity to your liking. Tip number 4. Adding some backlight. Some may even call it rim light or kicker light. If your artwork is of an overall warm tone, you can pick a lighter tint of a cooler color and paint some backlight. This helps the subject pop out of the background and makes the whole scene look more interesting and cinematic, adding more drama to your artwork. Tip number 5. Adding a bit of texture. Once your artwork looks finished, you can add a bit of texture on it at the very end. You can create a merged duplicate of the whole artwork by using the keyboard shortcuts Ctrl A to select the whole canvas, followed by Ctrl Shift C 
to create a merged copy and then control V. Now you can either add a bit of noise to it. You can go to filter, noise, add noise and select uniform and monochromatic and keep the value very low or it might lose its color vibrance and then press OK. Or you can download textures from Google, preferably a black and white texture. Bring it into your file. At the very top, select multiply as the blending mode and then adjust the levels and opacity of the layer until you get some good texture on your artwork. You can add a bit of color to this texture layer too from color balance. This gives an overall artsy look to your artwork. A lot of professional artists do it, but be careful not to overdo it. It should be subtle. Tip number six. Easy fix with liquify tool or warp transform. When you finish your sketch and you zoom out to get a good look at it and you find that something is off or out of proportion, instead of redrawing these parts again and again until you get it right, you can use the liquify tool from filter menu to make some quick adjustments until you're satisfied with it. You can even selectively modify certain areas by selecting that area with the lasso tool and then go to edit, transform, warp and adjust the grids until you're satisfied with the sketch. And finally, tip number 7, using color lookups and blending modes to easily check other possible color palettes and moods that can potentially add more aesthetic value and beauty to your artwork and make it look even better. So those were my 7 easy tips to instantly improve your digital art. If you found this video useful, like, share and if you're new to my channel make sure to subscribe and click on that bell icon so that you get a notification every time I upload my video. And if you have any feedback or video suggestions or questions definitely leave a comment. Your support is greatly appreciated. So that's it for now. See you on the next one. Peace.